Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Adam. Welcome to another P3D video and this one is all about the appropriate use of the simulator software. Uh, I see a lot of people uh, in videos, on streams, uh, people I talk with and I, I thought this video might be relevant. Um, if It might be full of information you already know, but I think it's best to run through it just as a, a refresher if you've perhaps forgotten or for those who don't even know. So there is a certain way to use this software. Um, and forgive me if you've already heard this, but this is scenario based. So what, what do I mean by that? Well, this is the scenario screen, <laughs> believe it or not. And every time you load up, say, a plane, we're going to take the uh, PMDG 737, for instance. Um, just any old one there, and we're going to take an airport, uh, for instance, my hometown of Birmingham, just any old one, and uh, we're going to take uh, the time of recording this, it's 10 to 7, and the weather profile of Rex. This is a scenario. Uh, the limitations that we set within its parameters, so for instance, what the sliders are set at, you know what your display is doing these are all the limitations of that scenario you know what where in the world are you going to be going um, and when you load into your sim you're you're meant to stay within those parameters you know it's a tra think of it like a training exercise not a flight and within a training exercise you're meant to stay within the parameters of your exercise and train within those limits um, I see a lot of people who once they're in their sim they go to the menu system and they start swapping planes out, or they start swapping airports out, or they start changing the weather, um, or the time. And that, to be honest, is not the correct way to use this sim. Um, for every time you load out a plane, you're actually loading in to your memory the plane on top of the plane you're already loaded from. You're just bringing in more planes. now. Um, same with the airport, you know, once you load into an airport, it loads all that information into your GPU and your memory um, and keeps it there for a fine amount of time before releasing it. When you load from an, to another airport, it keeps that information and also loads in the new information. So progressively, the more you're hopping around in your sim, changing planes, changing times, changing airports, you're actually making your performance worse, okay? So the best way to um, use the sim is when you need to change parameters, uh, let's say we want to change this plane to the 747, is to simply shut it down. Exit out, click end scenario, and remove yourself from the program. So let's say you're loaded up into your situation, your scenario, and you want to change your plane or your airport. And like I say, most people would go and actually select a new airport or a new plane. What you should actually do is end scenario first and create a new scenario. Now, even doing this, to be fair, can instigate a reload, um, which can slightly remove your frames uh what i would say is if you ever have to you know move to a new airport or have a new plane load up is you just exit p3d and then load in your new scenario and this is the way really that p3d should be run to keep the performance and the frames from slowly dwindling down to nothing um really what you want to do is load in a situation or a scenario, go fly that scenario, and then when you're finished, close down. And also, just double checking that uh, when you do close down, open up your task manager, or preferably, if you're using Process Lasso, is to make sure that the actual 
thread of process actually ends and closes out, which it should do. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit longer, and I've noticed in PMDG aircrafts, it can actually stay behind. And I think it's a SIM Connect issue. I think it's a old, it's like SIM Connect hanging on to the PMDG for dear life, not wanting to let go. Um, and even if it doesn't move, like after three minutes or so, you can just end that process straight away and then it's gone. And uh, making sure that, you know, there is no version of P3D running if you're going to load up another instance of it because uh, you don't want to be loading a, a situation or a scenario on top of a situation or a scenario that's going to just decrease your frame rate as well so I thought I'd just quickly do this one as a quick little tip the way you load into your flight is you load the plane you load the weather you load the airport you load the settings that is the parameters for that scenario you go fly it and then you come back out to make changes and load back in. And ideally, the best time to load your flight sim is just after you've opened up your PC for the first time. When you turn on your PC, the very first program that you open is your flight sim. You will have a better experience than if you've been running your PC all day. The hard drive has done that many cycles or is worn out and your memory is heated and your GPU is overheated and your CPU is on fire, that's not the best time to run this uh, situation or a flight. Um, as I say, after adequate rest, the best time is the first time you open up your PC. That is when the best time is to fly. So real quickly, uh, before we wrap it up here, another thing you can do, a real sort of uh, a tip or a saving uh, performance uh, helpful hint is in your sim objects folder. You know, I've got 47 and a half gig of airplanes in there and they're not even all the airplanes that I have in my PC or for my sim. If we go into my D drive, into P3D and into airplanes uh, where my add-ons are, here's another load of aircraft that I hold in my sim as well. And I think if I combined these with the ones that are actually in my uh sim objects folder you know i've got like uh about 60 gig i reckon uh 70 gig of airplanes uh that will load if they are sitting in your um sim objects folder in your airplane folder you know all of these uh aircraft let's see if we go to i actually want to find out what number that is sim objects and we go to airplanes everything that loads within these folders loads every time you load your sim so anything within here is also loading into your sim taking up precious uh performance away from your sim but mainly it's loading times that's what it really is i mean this is up to 43 gig now you know so i've got over a hundred gig of airplanes that are loading and when you load up your your simulator you know, uh, you might find that going in and out of the menus is a bit laggy, possibly because of all the airplanes that are you'll find in here. At the moment, I've only got 63 vehicles and it's just stopped at 63 gig. That means I have over 120 gigabytes of data for aircraft and that's loading into my sim as well. So you'll notice here, obviously we've got the default scenario plane, but uh, I've only got kind of, uh, the Carinado plane that I, I flew recently, um, which is on the C drive uh, connected, and then the PMDG planes, which uh, we can go into airplanes, and that is actually all I've got in here. The PMDG planes and then the AI traffic planes, and that's it. They are the only ones that I have in my, my simulator. Um, and the reason is basically I've taken all my other planes and I've turned, uh, I've got a hangar, like a virtual hangar. So basically this is where every other plane sits. So if I want to go fly a plane, this is where I will go to find one. Um, or on that uh, other D drive where they, they all sit as well. Um, and this basically, um, I keep a hangar and I also keep a storage unit. So my storage unit basically contains other 
items that are not aircraft, like submersibles or helicopters or avatars, which would actually load with my sim as well and take up a lot of space in the uh, the vehicle list here. So as you can see, I can quickly flick up and down. It's there's hardly any space being taken up here. Um, and if I did a quick, you know, seven three seven. It's literally just the 737s that will load up here, making this menu a little bit more streamlined and loading times a little bit faster. Now, I'll show you exactly how you do it. Basically, we're moving. We're not deleting anything. We're basically moving the planes out of airplanes. And the ones that you're going to fly regularly, if you just make a folder out of sim objects here, and you can call it hangar. I've called it Adam's hangar. Um, and basically pop everything in here except... The, if you use your default planes as AI traffic, which I do, another performance saving tip, then you need to keep them in here as well. Uh, and any other AI traffic that happens to be in this particular folder. So I've got some Hawaii AI that uh, is in here as well. Um, you will also find these down here. Uh, so avatars, rotorcraft and submersibles are obviously the folders here that you just pop in and also there's this plane here the indigo uas that's the drone he is found under miscellaneous he will also load now you do need to keep your default scenario plane in there as well which is the f35a otherwise you'll get a pop-up that says he's missing and now you're being loaded into you know a mode you know which i'm sure can't be good for flying so just make sure the default plane is in there or assign it to a different default plane but i mean to be honest i don't care if this is the default plane I, anyway guys that's just a quick and dirty trick if you want to load up your sim a little bit faster save a few frames while you're in there it's not loading all these planes up when you do load so that's just another performance tip so with that in mind thank you for watching in the next video um, i'm basically going to be going through how you can fine tune your pc into a flight simulator um, by changing a few things getting rid of things you don't need and really making your pc highly tuned to flight simulation so again thanks for watching and i shall see you in the next video 30, Bye -bye. 20, 10.